Hi all, Mass Barnkop from Kaiser Polytronics here. Today we're taking a look at the solar inverter. It is from a brand called Mastervolt. It is a 2 kilowatt inverter, single phase, not that big. Also fell victim to the crane at the scrapyard, so it's a bit smashed. But um, the power electronics are all intact, so let's tear it down. We are in February, it's cold, so we do of course need some coffee. Check out my high voltage mark in my uh, shop if you would like to support the channel. There is nothing better than cold workshops, coffee and teardowns. It seems to be kind of a heat sink and lid assembly with two plastic parts, top and bottom. Here at the bottom we have four buttons and a LCD panel. And for the connections, we can see we have a mains connection cable. We have a DC disconnecting switch, two photovoltaic panel lines. We have Modbus interfaces and the marking plate. We can see it's the model XS2000 SW from Mastervolt, single phase, 11 amp, 230 volt AC, and the string voltage up to 450 volt DC. That's absolutely terrible to tear down this. Got some kind of display waterproof assembly here at the front. It's one of these uh, units where once you have all the screws out, it's just falling apart. And I think this is absolutely no exception. So what do we have? Oh wow, that's actually quite a large inverter for a two kilowatt size. As you can see the whole Aluminum frame assembly here. It's just standard extruded parts. And the inverter itself. Hmm, let's see. We have our photovoltaic panel inputs. We have some filtering here. We have the disconnecting switch. We have a DC link here. We have an inverter cooling tunnel. Some kind of control board. And then we have output inverter inductors. A link back to the AC output and then we have the AC output over here in the corner but uh, let's uh, get all this taken off and take a closer look well, uh, the photovoltaic panel input down here we have a red and black wire with our DC bus going up to the upper PCB up here we will have the voltage regulation inverter and perhaps even some isolation with these. And then we have two different control boards with a bus sitting between them. And then we most likely have the output inverter sitting down here on this heat sink. Very thin actually, that's um, not much there. And we have the output inductors and filtering sitting here. We have some uh, noise suppression, common mode filtering and some not so much here on the photovoltaic side but much more over here at the mains connected side. Here on the photovoltaic, it's both to mitigate lightning or other transients from the panels, but also radiating switched noise from the inverter through your solar DC panels or wires. Something like electromagnetic compatibility is something that goes both ways. Your product both have to be able to withstand EMI, but also not impose EMI on other electronic stuff. So that's why we see pretty large filtering on both input and output sides of solar inverters. They are being installed in homes, not a normal noisy industrial environment. Here in the heat sinks, it has these uh, small links called B and C. Uh, I actually thought this was uh, some kind of uh, yeah, bridge to the heatsink, but it's actually just a piece of PCB um, with a letter on it. It doesn't have any cover, so probably just a spacer to keep everything from vibrating and hitting each other. What an absolute mess this is! Such a dirty inverter. All right battery inverter. Let's take a closer look at this. We have our DC link input here. That goes to the two DC bulk capacitors. 
and we can see goes up to the first heat sink here and we have our other on the other side here so here we have a row of four diodes these are hf0306 so something like 600 volt 30 amp on the other side we have a control board stamped 2009 here in the corner it's running on some kind of smaller microcontroller here we have a crystal sitting next to it something like seven point something megahertz we have a small housekeeping power supply we have some isolated power supplies over here for the gate drive we can also see what is most likely the up to couplers or ic um, or the gate driver ICs. So uh, let's just uh, get this pulled off and we can see the inverter behind. We have some kind of a Fulbright sitting here. Uh, judging from the bottom side, that is a Fulbright, yeah. It's uh, connected with these two as the outer legs and the two inner ones. Here we have most likely a diode and another IGBT out here maybe. It's hard to make out the writing. It's a 47N60C3 Infineon. That's most likely a MOSFET. And over here we have, again, Infineon switches. These are 35N60. Um, so not quite sure if that is MOSFETs or IGBTs. Uh, from the part numbers, most likely MOSFETs, as IGBTs like to have some more even numbers. Not much to say from the layout here. We have a lot of uh, inductance sitting here and some um, most likely uh, snubber capacitors to prevent any DC saturation of the transformers. That could be, uh, that is our isolation transformer. Again, this is only a 2 kilowatt inverter, so components are actually not that big. The output inverter. Over here we have the communication module plugging into the board here, which tells us that the display and the Modbus communicates with this card. We have our relays for switching on and off to the mains connection, and we have the filtering for the mains connection. These two connectors went up to the two photovoltaic links to measure the voltage. And here we just have a single wire which also went to the voltage string uh, with a series of resistors. So this is most likely the high voltage sensing and this is some kind of, um, yeah, could, could be the earth fault uh, sensing circuit for the panels. On the control side we are back to what we could see from before, that we have a microcontroller, we have isolated power supplies, we have gate drive ICs and over here we have some optocouplers and I oh we actually have two microcontrollers sitting here again this board is stamped 2009 we have a oh ST timekeeper so that's a small lithium cell with the crystal and real time clock interesting let's see what do we have here 16 and 4 megahertz crystals it is really hard to tell the manufacturer or the part number or the of these microcontrollers over here it's just a yeah ruined from conformal coding but over here i can see it is a free scale some kind of yeah m series fpga at the output inverter part we have the same switches that we saw earlier it's infineon 47 in 60. So it could be 600 volt, 47 amp. I have four of them sitting here. But the backside is really interesting because, check that out. Somebody had noise issues. Had to add capacitors and diodes in order to mitigate switching transients with cats and tape and glue and everything. I promised that we got back to the water tight packaged LCD here. So besides from being smashed up and not reusable, it is a large yeah, liquid crystal one. One of those with the pre-made um, texts and such on it, so not really something you can repurpose. Uses an NEC D6430 
GGF driver. So most likely a pretty standard setup off the shelf with a custom layout on the panel itself. So what can we take away from this? Well, I think I can say that I can take away some IGPTs, some uh, snubber capacitors. Other than that, this is back to wire and electronics, metal, plastic, scraps. I hope you learned something doing this teardown, and I really hope that you would comment on the video, share it with your friends, like it, subscribe to my channel if you really think this is worth watching more of. So until next time, see ya.